This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. Well, it's also awesome that we got to uh, sit down and watch some of the big magic that happened in September of 1996, uh, for our, uh, our big finish our big finale of ad free shows weekend. Uh, we did a watch along of the last few matches of that pay-per-view. And of course, most famously, that's where we saw that, Hey, that wasn't sting that jumped out of the limo and attacked Lex Luger. That was quote unquote, fake sting. That was the NWO sting. That was Jeff farmer. The real sting would reveal himself at that war games for fall brawl, 1996 clean house on everyone. And then walk out disgusted that nobody on the WCW side of things, be it Arn Anderson, Ric Flair, or his supposed best friend, Lex Luger believed him. And we got to see stings commentary on that. And really that's one of the last times we're going to see sting as the quote unquote surfer sting, which is really all we had ever known him as at that point. And we know what's coming next. He's going to become crow sting. And that's a persona that he still uses to this day, but this weekend of September 15th, 1996, that fall brawl pay-per-view. And then the next day, Asheville, North Carolina, September 16th, that's the event we're going to be watching, but this is a crucial weekend in Sting's history, right? In so many ways. I, I mean, it, it, it all dovetailed together, didn't it? You know, you had the launch of the NWO, the formation of the NWO. Um, that obviously moved the needle in a, in a substantial way. People got with that right away. And then what that storyline did for Sting's career, as, as you were just laying out, I mean, that was a, that was a major turning point, not only in the industry in general, um, but certainly in Steve Borden's life and career. And it, it was a phenomenal thing to watch, you know, and be a part of live. And it's still interesting to go back and look at it today. It's, it really was a pivot point, you know, and there was a lot of them during that period of time, obviously um, there were a lot of really big moments in 96 and 97, but I kind of think the fake sting, real sting, and at the core of that story, the, the fake sting, the real sting, and why sting cleaned house and it turned his back. It's all about betrayal, right? I mean, there are certain elements of storytelling that are so effective, and they have been since the beginning of storytelling time. And that particular story was sting, and that his reaction to being betrayed from his point of view as a character, he was betrayed by the people that he thought were closest to him because they all assumed that the fake sting was really sting. And that sense of betrayal, I, I guess I can identify with it maybe more than some, but that sense of betrayal, I think is such a common thing in human nature. You know, your reaction to being betrayed um, that it just clicked in such a massive way to catapult saying, as you pointed out, into a character and a phenomenal, a phenomenon that he's still <laughs> successful with today is God, isn't it fascinating? I mean, it really is, you know, because most characters are prepackaged. Hey, yeah. I've got an idea. Let's, here's this talent. We're going to make him look like this and or her, and we're going to give him or her this gimmick name, and we're going to create a story. And you ride that horse until it doesn't really work as well anymore. And then you come up with a new character. But in this case, it was a, it was a character born out of a story as opposed to putting a character in a story, if that makes sense. And it, it's, it's, it was so powerful, which is you know, why it still resonates today in its own way. It's fascinating too, to, to think about just how the business is going to change as a result of the NWO. And we've spent a lot of time talking about that, but the nitro we're going to cover today had a ten, had an attendance of 5,000 fans, but only 2,800 were paid. The night before there were 11,300 people in the building in Winston Salem for uh, war games, 10,714 of them had paid, but gosh, just fast forward a year and think about that 2,800 paid for a nitro. I mean, in, in, in just over a year, you're going to have 
well, even less than that. I mean, you're going to have tens of thousands of people in domes and the, these are the humble beginnings. And, uh, this gate for this nitro we're going to be covering today, only 44 grand. Wow. Uh, it, it just puts a lot of perspective to me that, Hey, the NWO thing is hot, but it really hasn't started to simmer yet. It hadn't got to a boiling point yet where fans from all over the country are just going nuts for it, but it's coming. Uh, Meltzer would recap the pay-per-view before he would say fall brawl, great undercard wrestling, bad main events and booking with more holes than Swiss cheese. Welcome to WCW. Let's see the logic for this week. Randy Savage is a challenger that nobody believes has a prayer of winning the title from Hulk Hogan on the next pay-per-view show. How does WCW convince its crowd that Savage actually has a chance? They beat him in a singles match, then have him come back and get destroyed again in a later angle. It's war games, the most violent and dangerous match of all time. Who do Fle who do Lex Flair and Arn get for their fourth partner when it appears Sting has gone against the team that has a huge size advantage and has been running roughshod over the entire promotion? Well, they get nobody. Even though the two ready and willing horsemen are there, and theoretically another 40 WCW WCW wrestlers should be there begging to fight. All right, so that is a fair criticism. I think, uh, we all know the real reason Randy Savage is challenging Hulk Hogan at Halloween havoc. It's because slim Jim is a sponsor, but Oh, by the way, at that point, the biggest WrestleMania buy rate in history was Randy Savage and Hulk Hogan. So let's not act like Randy Savage is not a draw and him losing the match here. There is not going to hurt his history with Hulk Hogan or diminish his drawing ability whatsoever, but I'll, I'll buy into the logic of, Hey, if you're trying to build the scalp as a real threat to the title, maybe let him win. Okay. Fair point. But I'm with Dave on the whole, Hey, wait a minute. If you really think Sting has turned your back on you, turned his back on you, why would you go in at a disadvantage when you think it's going to be four or five on three, why not recruit other folks? And I understand from a storyline perspective, that's what you're trying to tell that they don't know who to trust and. You know, they've got the advantage, but in theory, you could have just very easily slid another horseman in there. What do you think of that? God, it's really, I'd have to really go back and watch some of the setup for it and get a real feel for what we were trying to build there. But just on the surface, as you explain it to me, yeah, there's, I can't think of a valid reason why we wouldn't have. Um, there may have been one, there may have been some intent there to create doubt or, you know, maybe I, I don't even know. I don't want to guess because it'll sound ridiculous, but, um, you know, I'll, I'll take the criticism. It, it, it is fair criticism, you know, in retrospect, the only, uh, actual hole that we can poke in it storyline wise is Sting is doing an interview saying that he didn't make the attack. And of course he's referring to Lex as his best friend. But we're also supposed to believe they haven't spoken this entire time. Now on Nitro, Tony Schiavone and yourself explained that Sting was in Japan doing a promotional tour and he didn't know what happened. But the problem is when Sting is doing the live interview, he's saying that he saw the show on TV, but decided not to talk to anyone, including his best friend for a week. So that maybe doesn't make a ton of sense, but the story itself let's not get bogged down in the details. It's going to be hugely successful because this is the era where sting starts this scorpion, uh, crow, uh, who can you trust? Don't trust anybody. Uh, I'm my own man. I'm not Switzerland. I hate everybody type of thing. And it really worked not just in 1996, but in 2021, he's not coming out as surfer sting anymore. So it's easy to sort of poke holes in the origin story, if you will, but you can't argue with the success. Cannot. And again, I'd have to go back and watch it and try to remember exactly why we did things the way we did them at that time. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to, to, to remember, cause we just watched, you know, that show yeah. uh, with a fake sting. Was there any indication, you know, if sting presumably storyline wise is sitting in Japan and, um, somehow got it was able to watch nitro which in itself would be hard to believe right if we're telling a real story and we want real facts um it would have been a little tough for sting to see the show now maybe he saw it when he got home i don't know whatever 
go down a rabbit hole trying to figure that shit out. But, you know, did anything happen that night um, that would have caused Sting in that moment, storyline wise, to take exception to the fact that nobody pointed out that it wasn't the real Sting, that, that Lex and everybody else said, now this can't possibly be him? Or did they all assume that it was Sting? I don't remember. I'd have to go back and watch the show again with you, even though we just did it, because I wasn't looking for that kind of inciting moment um, in that story. But perhaps that was it. I'm just grasping at straws here. I don't know, without going back and looking at it. But regardless, as you just said, regardless of all that and how you want to go back and try to make sense and apply logic to storylines, I, I dare say that if we were to go and look at anything that's happening anywhere in the world of wrestling today and start applying that same or having the same intent to apply the same level of logic to, and detail to probably any story out there right now, we could probably have fun with that too. It is wrestling. There is, there is a little bit of a leap of faith creatively. Sometimes you do things, not intentionally, sometimes you just fuck shit up. Okay, been there, done that. Uh, and other times, some of those details just don't matter enough to spend a lot of time trying to explain storyline-wise. You're creating emotion. You're connecting emotional dots to eventually paint a picture. And granted, sometimes those details back then fell through the cracks. Continuity was a, a constant you know, challenge for, for WCW. Um, from before I got there to while I was there to while I was running the company, continuity was, you know, an issue. But I think to apply, you know, that level of logic and detail, pick any story that's going on right now and sit down with a six pack of beer and a cigar and, and start looking at it from that same prism or that same lens, you'll probably be able to pick anything you want to part. I do it every time I watch, you know, I'm watching something and I get really caught up in, you know, and, you know, you, maybe you've done the same thing. Maybe not. Maybe it's just me and Lori, but we're watching something. It's like, oh my God, if this was real life, that wouldn't have happened. Yeah, of course. Oh, okay. All right. So you're a genius. You should be writing television. You should be directing movies because you have that keen eye of, for the obvious. But after you blurt that out and point out that, yeah, but if this was real, that guy wouldn't do that. You get sucked into the story and you continue watching and you have a blast doing it. So I, I think this is a lot of this type of discussion. And I'm not going to deny that there were, there were details and flaws and, you know, holes that you could sometimes drive a, a Kia through. Um, but at the end of the day, it's pretty much wrestling as a whole, isn't it? No, it totally is. I mean, yeah. it's just, I don't, I'm not making an excuse, but. It is what it is. Talk I don't feel bad about it. How's that? <laughs> no, you shouldn't. I mean, listen, you, you can only, you know, in my business, I, I manage by results. If the results aren't there, we'll go, we'll go revisit your process. But if the results are there, the kudos to you and the results for this angle are here. So let's, let's celebrate, but I, Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.